This is the JCPenney department store in Hearst, Texas. Unveiled in 2019, the remodeled store includes style coaches, fitness classes, and a coffee bar. It represents the latest strategy that JCPenney has deployed in an effort to draw in customers. JCPenney rose to prominence as a national retailer by dressing the middle class, but analysts say the retailer's costly shifting strategies have failed to attract the modern middle class customer, leading the company to file for bankruptcy. With so many Americans staying home because of the coronavirus crisis, sales across the retail industry have plummeted, creating an uncertain future for many retailers. Here's how JCPenney fell from the top of retail. JCPenney was founded in Kemmerer, Wyoming in 1902 by James Cash Penny. The first store was named The Golden Rule and catered to farmers by selling blue jeans and other workwear. The retailer changed its name to JCPenney and expanded to locations across the United States. JCPenney was quality clothes at a fair price. They basically dressed the middle class and they had everything from clothes for kids to career clothes for women and men. In 1958, it began allowing customers to make purchases on credit. And in 1963, JCPenney released its first catalog. Well, they sort of came up during the era uh, when shopping malls were populating the country. They were sought after by mall developers to be anchors. They developed these private label brands like Arizona Jeans and Worthington that customers just loved. The retailer's stock price rose throughout the 1980s and 90s. But with the rise of fast fashion and e-commerce, retailers like JCPenney have faced problems in recent decades. Particularly retailers in the middle that were neither high nor low found themselves, you know, in distress. JCPenney hired former Apple executive Ron Johnson in 2011. As CEO, Johnson scaled back promotions and discontinued private brands. He had run Apple's retail stores and been very successful making Apple, you know, a very hot place to shop. He shifted to an everyday low price strategy, which sounds good in theory, but it turns out customers really like deals. Then former Home Depot executive Marvin Ellison took charge in 2015. He brought back appliances to the store, a product category JCPenney hadn't sold since 1983. Appliances, you know, it's a whole different business. It takes different, it's different distribution, it's different skills, it's lower margin. And as Penny really focused on rolling out appliances, it took its eye off apparel, which is where it makes the bulk of its money. Between 2014 and 2018, JCPenney only had three profitable quarters. Since Jill Soltow took the helm in 2018, the brand has been trying to implement changes like those in the Hearst location. Unfortunately, they haven't really had enough time to see what works, and they don't really have the money to roll this out, you know, en masse. Its stock had been trading below $1 for long enough that the New York Stock Exchange had notified the company that it was at risk of being delisted. And they have been in talks with, with creditors, but, you know, they were not able to reach a deal before the crisis. In March, JCPenney announced it would be closing all of its stores and furloughing workers in response to the coronavirus outbreak in the United States. In April, Fitch downgraded the company's bond rating, which was already in junk territory. And soon after, the company announced it would skip an interest payment owed to bondholders. You know, all its stores are closed. It's lost most of its revenue. What is the inventory going to be worth when they can actually get around to selling it? I mean, it, it, there are a lot of unknowns that just make the whole process more difficult. That sort of middle of the road department store has really lost favor. And you need to really define who you are. This sort of like trying to be everything to everyone is not a, a game you can play in today's world.